What's up, Crypto Empire? Happy Sunday. Welcome back to yet another Crypto Empire Sunday live stream. I am your host, Connor from Crypto Empire, and boy, do we have a good show prepared for all of you today. If you're just tuning in, welcome to the program. Be sure to smash up that like button on your way in and then sit back, kick your feet up, and get ready for an amazing show. Big shout out to Jazzy saying Alpha Incoming. Always here early to the live streams. Always the first one to show support. Big shout out to Jazzy. Thank you for all of your support, my friend. We also got CRO8 saying good morning, Connor, an Empire fan from Australia, Gold Coast. Let's scoop those gains. Let's dominate the market. Let's scoop those games. Gains, not games, gains. And uh, shout out to the Gold Coast down under in Australia. My bad. Wrong transition there. Well, let's start things off with our crypto market overview and uh, just kind of see where everything is at. So Bitcoin right now, $24,360. Of course, we just tested $25,250 last week on Wednesday. And uh, yeah, we've been kind of consolidating right underneath that major resistance point from that test. And the way things have been going, it certainly feels like we are about to blow through it. But... I want to discuss kind of everything that I'm seeing right now in the charts. So we'll get to that when we go over Bitcoin technical analysis. Ethereum right now is 1675. Everything is slightly either flat or down on the day. Some things are still up. But Bitcoin slightly pulled back. So really a mixed market. Things are all over the place right now. If we're going to look at things from a curve perspective, we're very high up on the curve. So basically what we're doing right now, if we're taking longs, we're buying high and we're trying to sell it higher, which isn't really ideal as a trader. I don't really love doing that, but that's the market we're in. All rationale is out the window. We're pumping. Now, if we take a look at today's gainers and losers, we got Xmon up 74% on the day. We got QuickSwap up 65%. MTL always pumps out of nowhere, right? If anybody's been in crypto for a while, you've seen MTL just do nothing and then pump. And today's one of those days where it pumped. So if you look at all the things that are up today, a lot of random stuff, a lot of low cap random junk is pumping today. So yeah, that's that's the market we're in right now. It's one of those times, those rare times in crypto where you know everything just goes and all rationale is out the window. It's turbo bull mode, we're in turbo bull mode right now. If you take a look at today's gainers, biggest gainer is 20% and it's poly doge, some random coin, right? This thing probably has a market cap of a million dollars. $12 million market caps. That's the biggest loser today. So we're in a wacky market, if you haven't noticed. A lot of, a lot of stuff is uh, consolidating down. I don't know. It's a wacky time. Deep brain chain. Of course, I covered this project back in early January. And um, yeah, it's up over 100% from the time I covered it in my video. But right now, it's down 8% on the day. So those are the gainers and losers. It's buy high, sell higher season. Let's go over the Bitcoin technical analysis so I can really discuss what I'm thinking. So let's look at Bitcoin. We'll get into all coins after. So let's look at Bitcoin on the daily time frame. And again, very clear what is happening right now. We have this major level at $25,250. This was, first of all, support back in May of 2022. This looked like capitulation at the time, but we did end up melting through that and going lower. But regardless, this was kind of a major support level in that previous bear market last year. It was then used as resistance in August of 2022. And here we are eight months later, after a brutal eight months where we went down to test 15400 we're back up to 25k. So this is the moment of truth. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Are we just going to punch through it and keep on going to the target of, you know, 28? Ultimately, my target for this rally is up here in this blue zone. I've covered this before on stream 38 to 40k. But of course, first of all, we need to get through 30k and 28k mainly cuz 28k is that support level from the summertime correction in 2021 in that bull market year. Right, we tested 30k, 20, 28k multiple times. Right, we stopped at that um, price during the bear market. We consolidated for a while, and then we nuked down lower. But this was previous support. Now it's resistance up here at 28k. So are we just going to punch through and touch it, or are we going to get rejected 
head back to like 21, 20K, test some lower levels, and then make our way up there. Well, here's the thing. Usually, usually I would expect us to pull back. But like I've been saying, I've been saying it all week in my Discord. All my Discord members know. But if you're just watching me here on YouTube, you're about to hear it for the first time. And I've been saying it since I started the stream. All rationale is out the window right now. Bitcoin is completely decoupled, uncorrelated to stocks. Right, Last week, stocks were looking very bearish. And um, you know they were either flat or slightly down. And we have Bitcoin pumping 10% in a day. So all kind of ways that I would normally kind of look at the market are off the table right now. It's a wacky, wacky market. So either we go turbo bull and we just punch, it's like flipping a coin, a coin basically. Anybody that tells you definitively that we're going to smash through 25K right now is just lying through their teeth. They have no idea. Nobody has any, any idea what's about to happen here. All right. So usually, um, I would say we're probably gonna pull back here, but the way that things look right now, I just wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised to see it just keep on pumping. And uh, it's, like I said, it's buy high, sell higher season. Usually we wanna buy low and sell high. Well, right now we're you know we're pretty high on the curve. We're at the top of the curve, at the, the topmost resistance, and you know it doesn't necessarily look like it wants to, to stop. We are in consolidation up here below 25K, but it's buy high, sell higher time. It doesn't last forever. It's usually pretty short lived, but it can go on for one, two weeks. And we may be in one of those times right now. So you definitely can't be taking on too aggressive positions right now. If you're just entering into fresh positions, I don't think it's a very smart idea to being to be super aggressive because we're at such a major resistance level. And it's the first time we've tested it in eight months. Right? Usually when it comes to these major support levels or major resistance levels, it's going to take a few tries to break through it. So that's why I'm kind of being so cautious as I am right now. Do I want us to just smash through it? Yeah, that'd be sweet. That'd be great for all my investments, my active trades. But I also understand how the market works. And I understand that the market does not go straight up. And I understand that people are very greedy right now. There's a lot of greed in the air. And usually you got to be a little bit fearful when other people are greedy. So yeah, everything is kind of wacky is basically what I'm trying to say. Now, if we do pull back, pretty obvious where I think we'll go to. We really, you know, over here, I, the CPI move, CPI this previous Tuesday, you know, I long this bottom perfectly, okay? I did close out early because I didn't expect all of this, but I long this bottom here perfectly. It was at my exact outline level that I've been showing you over here around 21,500 to 21,300, showed this level multiple times here on YouTube, etc. right? It was no uh, stranger to me. So if we do actually pull back, I would expect a further retest into this zone, right? Maybe even test and sweep these lows down here. It is possible, right? And this is when everybody, again, is gonna flip bearish. All the people right now, you know, on Twitter or whatever, all hyped up and excited, like, yeah, this is awesome. I told you they're going to be silent as ghosts if we do get the pullback here. Okay, there's a lot of perma bulls out there. You can't listen to the perma bulls because they only show up when things are bullish and when things, you know, tank, they're nowhere to be seen. So, yeah, this is the area where I would not be surprised if we do get a proper actual pullback. 20K, don't be shocked. We got up here in like three days. We can come down here in a day. Wouldn't be the first time it's happened to Bitcoin and it certainly would not be the last. All right, so if you can get anything out of this stream right now, any pertinent information, it is to basically be a little bit cautious. Uh, but at the same time, we're in turbo bull mode. So if you left curve it and you just long everything, it could potentially work out for you. Let me go ahead and catch up with the live chat and see what's going on. We only have 25 likes, we over, have over 55 viewers. What the heck is that? Smash up that like button right now if you're enjoying the live stream so far. And if you are brand new to Crypto Empire, smash that subscribe button as well and turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Smash up the like button. Let's go get that count up. Let's see. We got Nanook saying good evening all. What's up, Nanook? Sniff in the building. What's up, Sniff? Reverend Flashback. Hi, Connor, my friend. Happy to see you. How are you today? I'm doing very good, Reverend Flashback. Thank you for asking. 
We got Red Start saying hi, Connor, from Milan, Italy. What's up, Red Start? Hope you're enjoying Milan, Italy, or if you're from there, hope you're having a great day over there. Labradoodle with us today. We got Joshua saying, what up, Connor? One video of VRA Ferocity Cryptocurrency. Yeah, I haven't made a VRA video in a pretty long time, huh? I'll have to add that one to the schedule. We got Karen saying hello. What's up, Karen? Cambo Zone. What's up, Cambo Zone? Nanook saying looking good. Don't shave. You like the beard, huh? Good to know. Cool. We got Rigoberto Chavez Jr. in the building saying gotta start hot. Smash the like button. You already know. Thank you, Rigoberto. We got Dalton Moore. Champs are here. Champs are here. Absolutely good to see you, Dalton. And uh, yeah, big shout out to everybody here with me today. E&M, All Day Dre with us. We got Elvis. We got Alphonse Mele. We got Adrian Kent. We got Woody. We got Make Money with Harry. Ghost. Ostia Craig Lands. Everybody's here. Frank the Tank D-Gen. Big shout out to everybody taking some time out of their Sunday to be here with me right here at Crypto Empire where we dominate the crypto market. Smash up that like button if you're enjoying the stream so far. Big shout out to Inca Warrior saying hi from Chi Town. Chi Rack over there in the uh, Midwest of the U.S. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue on with the live stream and get into our Twitter wisdom. So today's Twitter wisdom is going to be from myself. Put this one out right before the live stream. And it goes, you won't catch every pump and you'll catch even fewer of them if you bounce from trade to trade because you don't have the patience to see it through. Less is more. Stop pressing the buttons and let the market do what it needs to do. I've been looking at these markets now. I've been trading for over five years. Time has flown by certainly, but I got into it at a pretty young age and I stuck with it. And now here we are today. But I don't know how many times I used to do it all the time myself and I get messages from people I it's all the time. It's like constant, you know, I, I'm holding this coin. Should I sell it and buy this one? Should I sell my current trade and go in after this trade? Look, if you need to be asking these questions, you probably shouldn't do it. All right. If you bought something, it's because you believe that it would go up in price. And if it hasn't done that yet and you want to abandon the investment, you're probably going to kick yourself later on because usually how it goes is the second you sell your coin that has not moved yet, the second you sell it, one, two days later, it's going to start ripping. Okay, so if you bought something and it hasn't pumped yet and you're seeing everything just take off right now, you need to reevaluate your investment. And if you still do believe in it, you just have to hold on to it. All right. I've gotten so many messages recently asking me these you know, questions, it's just basic stuff. Should I sell my trade I've been holding on to for two weeks to go after this coin that's up 40% today? No, you probably shouldn't. All right, so be patient with your trades, let them play out. You know, I'll show you some examples. Most recently, it's gonna be something like Filecoin, right? Filecoin, I've been talking about this one in my Discord quite a bit the past few weeks. And if you look at what it did, it pumped all the way up from like under $3 up to around $5, $5.75 at its high. And then look how long it's spent over here. And also what we had here is just so classic. This is just so classic. Let's take a date and time measurement. So it took 25 days over three weeks before actually pumping in this consolidation and always, 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 always how it works. You know, you have your support level. You can draw something like a trend line, all right? And also you can draw a horizontal level below these wicks, like so. So what happened here, price broke the trend line. It sweeped these wicks. Most people see this big red daily candle. What do they do? They sell. They're like, oh man, I bought it up here at $5.50. Now it's all the way down here at $4.70. I'm gonna go put this into something that's up 40% today. They sell it here. Then what happens two days later, bam, explodes, all right? This is just one example. You know, this thing pumped 100% from that low after it swept these lows. So, you know, this is extremely pertinent inf information here. Also, big shout out to Jazzy here on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter if you're not already following me. But this happens time and time again all right this won't be the, the this isn't the first time it's happened and it won't be the last another example is going to be something like sama moon sama 
right? I actually went over this last Sunday. I think it was Jazzy who asked me about it, but it was it's the same thing, all right? You know, this is a low cap altcoin that's actually solid, that actually has good fundamentals. If you look at it, the market cap is, you know, $16 million. It's a low cap. Well, what happened with it? You know, a lot of people were buying it up here at, you know, four cents, three cents, three and a half cents. What happened? Well, you always got to flush out the weak hands, all right? You got to flush out the weak hands in this market. That's exactly what Sama did. As you can see, you have all these horizontal levels, right? Yeah, and you have the base of where it got listed on the exchange down here at, you know, three cents. Well, what happens? It breaks through all these support levels. And I said this last week on stream, you can go watch it. I said this is just a deviation. I said, watch it reclaim all these levels, and that's exactly what it did. Also, by the way, guys, if, if you know how to edit YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and know how to do that, shoot me an email. Shoot me an email. Go to my about page and click view email address. It's cryptoempireco at gmail.com. Shoot me an email if you make good YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. All right, I got to get the, my shorts going because I simply say too much information that is consistently correct on a regular basis to not have it in short form video. So if you're looking for some kind of job, if you wanna make a little bit of money and start making my content into shorts, shoot me an email right now at CryptoEmpireCo at gmail.com and let's get this thing rolling. Anyway, back to our schedule of programming. So yeah, Sama, perfect example. Perfect example of why you just gotta stop pressing the buttons and let the market do what it needs to do. Still hasn't taken off yet, but most people all the weekend sold it down here. They thought it was going to zero. Well, guess what? It's pumped right back up above support. So there's a lot of FOMO right now. There's a lot of impatience in the, in the air. A lot of people are on social media and they see everybody making all this money, posting their wins, etc., etc. And they're like, oh man, my coin hasn't done anything yet. But listen, if you bought the coin, it's because you believe that it will do well. So you have to see your investment through. Do not sell too early. So that's today's Twitter wisdom. That should make sense to everybody. It should be loud and clear what I'm trying to say here. Make money with Harry saying he'll do my shorts. Looks like we got a, uh, looks like we got one. We'll talk about this after the stream, Harry. I appreciate that. Uh, Michael, welcome back, Connor. Hope you're doing marvelously well and still bullish on Zyberswap. You already know, man. Still bullish on Zyberswap. If you take a look at the Zyberswap chart right now, it never pulled back. I mean, this thing's in a parabola. This is a straight up parabola here. Where is the curve? Here we go. Let's go ahead and draw this parabola on the chart so that everybody can see it clearly. Something like this. Something like this. And also, let me just um, let me make sure you can see the entire screen here. There you go. And now you can see the uh, y axis as well as the x axis. So, yeah, Zyber Swap right now, it's in a parabolic curve. All right. This thing is going straight up. Now, until we break this parabola, yes, I'm bullish. All right, just going off the technicals here purely. The fundamentals are extremely strong. They have so much going on right now, and Arbitrum is hot. All right, let's actually talk about that for a second because anybody that knows me who's been with me for a while, I've been making videos almost two years now here on YouTube. I've been in crypto since late 2017. But one project I covered in the past that you know did horrible was PokeSwap. All right, and PokeSwap is really not a lot different from something like ZyberSwap. It's a decentralized exchange. The reason why ZyberSwap has done so well is because it was just the perfect storm of things going well at one time. The main thing is Arbitrum. Arbitrum is a layer two network for Ethereum and layer twos are hot right now. So everybody is on layer twos. It uses MetaMask wallet, which everybody already uses. Something like PokeSwap, you need to get these random, you know, Sora, XOR wallets, all these Polkadot wallets. Nobody's ever used them before. There, there was so much friction, all right, and so much 
uh, difficulty with onboarding and stuff like that. You know, Pokeswap can still come back, but you know, I'm just using it as an example. Sometimes I'll say things that are solid, but it, they just won't go right. All right. But something like Zyberswap, it was just the perfect storm of everything going right at one given time. And now we have a coin that's done like 50x for us. All right. Anybody that got in super early with us, you know, you're up huge. Okay. So you got to take risks. You got to take risks in this market. Did I know that Zyberswap was going to crush this hard when I made my first video about it? No, I really had no idea. All right. But that's the beauty of this. You don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen over here on the right side of the chart. Where, where's my paint tool? Here we go. Brush. Nobody knows what's going to happen over here on the right side of the chart. All we can do is predict and speculate. All right. But yeah, Arbitrum is hot. Layer twos are hot. Arbitrum will continue to be hot. Um, but the reason I even brought up Pokeswap was because, you know, Pokeswap, it's not that there was anything horribly wrong with it, that it didn't do well. It's just that Polkadot was completely obscure back then in 2021. Nobody really had ever used it before. Nobody had their wallets set up, their Polkadot wallets set up. And it was just too difficult. But something like Zyberswap, it was just so easy for people to get on board. Just go bridge some Ethereum over to Arbitrum and you can get and start farming. So yeah, still bullish on Zyberswap to answer your question before I go off on too much of a tangent here. Still bullish, like I said in my last Zyberswap video, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing hit $50. Completely serious. And if you look at these, if you look at the uh, DEX tools, you can see all the buys and sells. And I mean, I saw somebody buy like 30 ETH in one go just before the stream. You know, somebody bought three and a half ETH. Uh, completely ridiculous. And also, you know, going back to our tweet today and our Twitter wisdom, you know, you see these buys and sells here. You know, who, who the heck is selling 0.18 Zyberswap? 0.13 Zyberswap. You know, just who, who is doing this? I, I understand that crypto is global and there's a lot of people out there, you know, who don't really have that much participating. And I don't want to hate on anybody here, but it's like you might as well just let it play out. Stop pressing the buttons and just let it play out. Why are you selling 0.1 Zyber for 0.0002 ETH? Sit on your hands and if you have conviction in the investment, just let it do what it needs to do. All right, but uh, yeah, that's Zyber Swap, still bullish on it. Um, community decks, and they haven't even launched any launch pads yet, so that's going to be exciting. All day, Dre says, we making some bank in the Discord, must join, yeah. For sure i don't know what you're waiting for last call i'm about to increase prices uh we do too much i do too much to charge these low rates so the value will only increase but listen my fee is going up just the reality of the situation here been the same price for two years since i launched it uh, and it's only it's only right it's only right that these go up so yeah if you want to get locked into these low prices you should join now because uh, they're not going to stay that low for too much longer at all Oracle fast money trader. This guy's one of these technical analysis clowns. After facts, he st starts a live stream. You're a clown, my friend. I would love to see any of your videos on YouTube. I would love to see you even show your face on camera, but you're probably too scared. So you can get off of my live stream and go kick rocks. You're now banned from my channel permanently. Have a great day, loser. Let's go ahead and uh, remove this guy from the channel. You just lost all privileges to speak on my channel again. And also, hate never comes from above, my friend. I know you're below me. I know you're mad that you see my channel doing so well, but keep on hating from below. Anyway, let's continue on with the stream here. Inca Warrior says, I think Ben Q is a sleeper bullish. <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at some of these LSD coins, such as Ben Key. So I charted this one a while ago in my LSD uh, video. And I do agree with you. It is certainly interesting right now because it is at such a big resistance level. Can it break out from here and send? Yes, it absolutely can. And this is your target. Mm -hmm. 
1.8 cents approximately. Right now it's 1.2 cents. And I did say back in my video talking about these liquid staking derivative coins that this one hadn't pumped yet and it still really hasn't pumped. Look at this slow grind up. This, this is a daily time frame. This is such a slow grind up here into resistance. That's what we want to see. All right, we don't want to see one fast move into resistance because then there's a good shot that it's just going to get rejected. And this is the perfect example. All right. We started down here at 0 0.006. Over here, it took three days to get to this level. This time around, to get to the level from the bottom, it took 41 days. So that's a big difference there. That I like. That is good for a breakout. So it may hang out a little bit longer here, but ultimately I do see it going back up here to 1.8 cents as your first target. But yeah, that's Ben Key. Let's take a look at V Chain. V Chain looking pretty good here. Finally broke out of its consolidation. Kind of si looks similar to Filecoin here. where it was going sideways for three weeks before it ultimately decided to take off again. Right to the line here at three cents. So the way that things are, like I said in my Bitcoin TA part of this live stream, we're in buy high, sell higher season. And all of these levels, all of these resistance levels to the left, they all get broken when the market is strong like it is right now. And there's a big gap to fill here on VeChain too. A big gap to fill. 53%. So VeChain is good, it's bullish, it's strong, it's breaking out. If you look in the weekly time frame, it's looking very strong in this weekly candle. You know, three, four green weeks in a row, two red weeks, and then we break out again. Exactly like Filecoin just did, actually. It's the Chinese coins, right? China loves Filecoin, VeChain Chinese too. They're the ones pumping this market. I would essentially, this is what I would do. <laughs> this is interesting because it's so overextended already to long up here. There is no divergence, which is a good thing. And if you look we're right on the trend line and we're also in this horizontal structure level previous resistance now flip to support so if there was a time to long and it's going to continue higher it's actually right now all right and this is a four hour chart if we go to the one hour chart you know we just sold off after tapping this level here right back into previous structure resistance now it's structure support also you have the double confluence with the trend line so if we're going to get, continue pumping without a big pullback, it's going to be from right here. But with that being said, if we do actually pull back further because of, you know, Bitcoin pulling back further, then we're going to come down to these lower levels, 2.6, and then possibly even as low, yeah, still around 2. Point, I would say around here, like 2.6 maybe 2.5 um, but yeah VeChain is looking strong if you look in the weekly time frame big things are happening here we're recouping a lot of lost ground very quickly and 
I think it at least gets up to fill this gap or it gets up to the top of this range before a major, major pullback at 3.3 cents, which is still another 15% away from current price. So this would be your first target up here. First target and then second target up here at 4.4, but that's VeChain. Axie, take a look at Axie real quick. So Axie was another one from Tuesday. Um, down here at the bottom is like 9, 920, but around 940, 943 is where I put the alert out in. I mean, that was the bottom that pumped up right to this trend line at 1130. Now it's been in consolidation, trying to break this trend line, right? It's tapped the trend line twice now. Every time it's touched this trend line over the past month or so, it's gotten rejected. All right, so, and also this is a, a huge kind of, um, I don't know what you would call this formation, flag, pennant, triangle. It would be a pennant over a triangle, but it's a huge bullish kind of consolidation as far as I'm concerned here with the slight deviation right before CPI, right after CPI it reclaims and now it's at the resistance in this thing. So yeah, I mean, Axie gaming season coming up, higher time frame kind of bullish consolidation here. Would not be surprised to see this thing send up to around $15, $16 next. If as long as things do stay bullish, of course, Bitcoin tanks and rugs us, then it's going to take longer for that to happen. We'll probably come back down and test around eight dollars on Axie, nine to eight dollars if that happens before the actual big breakout. Um, but it's buy high, sell higher season, so you got to assume that the breakout's going to happen sooner rather than later. And for Axie, yeah, you're you're targeting around fifteen, sixteen dollars. LDO. Everybody should know about LDO at this moment in time. I was looking on Twitter the other day and somebody investigated all of the big venture capitalist funds wallet and LDO Lido was the general consensus of the altcoin to hold. Most VC firms have their largest allocations in Lido LDO. Why? Because on-chain transactions. This is the number one Ethereum liquid staking derivative token out there. It has the most on-chain transactions pretty much on Ethereum. And it's only going to get bigger, especially when the ETH Shanghai upgrade goes into full effect here. So LDO, kind of the it's a no-brainer play. If so many VCs have so much of it and you know millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of it, you got to assume it's because they think it's going to go up, right? So yeah, I think LDO is going to go up too. I bought all my LDO below $2 here, okay? And also I put out the alert in the Discord also below $2 and I also made my video about Ethereum LSDs when this thing was below $2 and I said, if you wanna trade this narrative, go with the clear winner and that is Lido LDO. This video here, Ethereum Liquid Stake and Derivative Tokens Explained, if you haven't watched that one yet, I highly encourage you to watch it because the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade is not here yet, but it will be soon. All right, and get familiar with all the LSD coins. But anyways, guys, yeah, I mean, this thing, 4 to $6 is what I'm looking for next. I think it's going to start to teleport, like really, really strong, bullish um, price action. If you look on the weekly time frame here, let's get rid of this key level indicator. If you look on the weekly time frame here, we are at major resistance all right we have swept this high from august a lot of charts are at their august highs right now but anyways Lido swept the high from august now underneath it we don't want to see the the weekly candle close beneath it all right this is kind of a swing failure pattern if it can close beneath it like this and uh yeah we want to see this weekly candle close above three dollars and eleven cents for ldo and then reach our next targets. This one at 379, yeah, it'll, it'll hit it, but you know, realistically speaking, four to six dollars is gonna come pretty quickly here for LDO Lido. Dips are 100%, not financial advice, but dips are for buying on this one. 
So the trend is your friend until the end, and the trend is certainly up right now. This thing, it's an overcrowded trade. What do I mean by that? Everybody knows about Lido now. Everybody is kind of in on it. It's no secret anymore. So that's why I think it's taking so long to pump. But it's been in consolidation for over a month now. And if it's going to continue higher, it's going to be soon is what I'm seeing. And FXS Frax, same kind of thing. right? This is up big from the bottom at, at around $4. It's up over 100%. So is Lido. But anyways, if you look at FXS, it's also in consolidation here in the weekly time frame. It's been in this consolidation for you know, three, four weeks. So also do to continue higher if we're gonna continue higher. Now real quick, real quick, while we have Frax on the screen, remember this chart pattern, folks. Remember this pattern, right? What do you call this? You can call this a symmetrical triangle, whatever you call it, all it is is two trend lines connected from the highs and the lows. And what is this? This was a bottoming pattern on FXS Frax, right? You can see it exploded out of this one. Well, where else can we find a, a chart that has this exact bottoming pattern but hasn't pumped out of the bottom yet? Well, good thing you're here watching me right here at Crypto Empire. Where's our friend saying I only predict the future after it happened? Guess what, man? You're a fool and you're completely wrong. I'll give you one right now that hasn't broken out yet. And that's going to be Glint. So it's actually just starting to right now. Well, my friends, what do we see here? Does this picture look familiar to you? It should, because I just showed you it right here in FXS Frax. Same exact thing. Uh, here, same exact thing. I don't know, you tell me. Does it look the same? I think it does. And this one's also longer. The longer the consolidation, the bigger the rally. Don't fade it. CRO8, uh, did you get my request? I did not, CRO. What did you want to see? People asking me about Glint on stream. I just talked about it here. Will Bitcoin go up or down? RH. If only we had the crystal ball, man. I'll, actually, I, I have something. We can just ask the magic conch shell. He's going to give us the answer if, if Bitcoin will go up or down. Let's ask the magic conch. Uh, another one that is giving me Filecoin vibes is ApeCoin. I've brought this one up a few times over the past few weeks. ApeCoin, it's been down the past two weeks. All right, you can see these two red weekly candles. Currently, we have a green one that's going to close in like three hours, two hours and 45 minutes. This weekly candle is going to close. But basically, if you look at what happened, it, it went and tested the trend line from the bottom. And uh, yeah, ApeCoin giving me Filecoin vibes. Would not be surprised to see a 50% daily candle soon. Taking this thing up to around eight to nine dollars. It's due, All right? If you go look at Filecoin again, kind of similar, where you have the initial pump up, consolidate a few weeks. Right, this is a three-week consolidation on a Filecoin. ApeCoin coming out of its three-week consolidation now. Then we pump up. This weekly candle from high to low is 100%. Right, so don't be surprised if Ape does it next. You heard it here first. And CRV. CRV is an active position at the current moment in time. If we look at CRV here, after trying to break out, it got up seven cents and then couldn't hold it. CRV very bullish because they have their stable coin coming out soon. 
And of course, we all know about the crackdown with BUSD and Paxos by the U.S. government, the U.S. cartel. So, CRV is another one where I think it's going to shoot right up to $2 when it actually does break out, when the breakout does mm -hmm. come. And going back to this tweet again, you don't know when that breakout is going to come. All right, you can sense it, or you can, you can look at the chart and see cute clues that it will happen soon, but you don't know the exact time it's going to happen. So you just got to be patient and wait for it to happen. CRV, $2 soon. You heard it here first if you haven't heard it yet. Also, on the, on the daily time frame here, if you look at this, we can also go to a weekly. Weekly, kind of a, it's like the same picture. Let's clean this up, and I want to show you this picture. Get rid of all this noise down here. So you had the weekly kind of bottoming pattern here. Call this a triangle, call this a wedge, call this a whatever you want to call it. All we did was draw up two trend lines as support and resistance. It broke out through resistance to the upside. And then very similar to something like Filecoin, you had the three weeks of consolidation, one, two, three. And now you're starting trying to get the breakout. I don't want to see this this green weekly candle close the way it is right now. This is a it's a good weekly close, but it's I really would like to see a closure above this wick. Above this wick here. Like this. How it is right now is it's an ugly sweep. Not a great look for a continued sustained move higher. Um, but yeah, a lot of these charts are all flirting with huge moves coming up. And CRV is certainly one of them. And then you also can add in the stablecoin hype narrative to it. It probably will be a sell of the news. So the day that the stablecoin launches, I would not be long on it. But beforehand, like right now, it makes sense. So yeah, we'll see what happens with, with this one here. Um, yeah, flirting with a major daily, weekly time frame breakout. Enough said. Pretty simple. Predator Slayer. What a scammer. How can you believe this? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you calling a scammer? If you're calling me a scammer, you're an idiot, man. I've been here for two years straight. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Get out of here. Get off my channel. Clown. Absolute clown. I've been here for two years straight and I've done wrong by nobody and I can sleep well at night because of that. Come on here, my channel. <laughs> You're an idiot. Uh, Alphonse, where can you buy Glint on BeamSwap itself? Uh, let's check out AVAX. Gonna want a request for it. So let's start zoom down on the weekly and work our way in here. First thing you should notice, we are in weekly resistance. All right, going back, this is where we stopped the bleeding over here in May of 2022. We then of course ended up making two consecutive lower lows, but this did act as a support level back in May where we got a somewhat sizable bounce up All right this one here yeah we got a 50 percent bounce from this level previously so previous support now resistance yeah, 
clean up this trend line here, get rid of this. So this is still bullish to me. All right, I would not abandon the fact that if you're waiting for this to pump, you know, you're waiting for this to fill the gap up to $30 to, to $40, I wouldn't abandon it right now. We just looked at so many weekly charts that have pretty much the same exact picture, the big pump up, the, the two consolidation, uh, the two red weeks of consolidation, and then the next move higher again. It might come this week, it might come the next week, it might come three weeks from now, who knows? But I wouldn't abandon it and chase something else if you are expecting this to go. There was some obvious signs that it was gonna have this kind of small pullback, right? You can see things like divergence here, price action making these higher highs while it's getting weaker. But also notice how it dumped and then it quickly kind of reclaimed some levels. It quickly got back above resistance here in 19, 1928. So that's a good thing, all right? My pattern recognition is kicking in. I wanna show you Phantom. And FTM over here. So when FTM first was breaking out, when it was like 20, 25 cents, I remember this, I was trading it at the time. And if you look, it also had the bearish divergence, right? At this 25 cent level. Look at what happened, all right? It doesn't really break down, it then breaks down, it consolidates, and then it just takes off. So if we go back to AVAX, I just wanna use that for pattern recognition. If you go back to AVAX over here, it did the same thing really over here with like $15. Um, but anyways, Yeah, on the four hour, it's also very clear. You have the clear bearish divergence. So, maybe it does come back to 15. If it does, that's where you wanna be a buyer. That is current demand, um, closest to current price, right? I would, ex if we do get a proper flush, I wouldn't expect this to hold as support. I would expect it to come and test these levels. And, um, you know, from there, like I said, our next targets are 30 to 40. So you definitely have to be patient with it and you can't just abandon it too quickly. But it's certainly taking its time right now. Just flirting around the $20 level, not really doing too much, flushing some people out. But again, if it comes back down here to 14 to 15, that is where you would want to be a buyer. Because the, the, up the upside targets are clear as day. We know it's going to hit 30. We know it's going to eventually hit 40 again. It's just a matter of when and timing the pump. The easiest thing to do is literally just buy it spot and wait. right? If you have actual capital to trade with, which you should, um, you, know, you, can put, you can put your capital in it. And then, you know, wait for the 50% or 100% move and, you know, double your money in a relatively, nothing is safe. There's always risk involved. But yeah, like we know this is going to be 30 to $40 again. It's just a matter of when, whether it's this week, next week, or the week after. So just sit tight and let it do its thing. You know, in the meantime, of course, you can trade the lower time frame moves. And that does certainly rely heavily on Bitcoin. Let's check back in with Bitcoin here. So recovering slightly from that dump, back down to 24,200. Really in consolidation. Again, this is at major structure resistance at $25,000. It is overextended. If we look at stocks, you know, stocks not necessarily looking great right now. Close that Friday session. Um, slightly green but barely also you know is lower than previous structure so stocks really not looking could could just be a sweep 
But anyways, yeah, not particularly that bullish on stocks right now. The dollar, if you look at the dollar, just reflipped 103.8 back into support. I already have it labeled as a major support resistance flip. So the dollar right now is bullish. All right, that's why I'm saying crypto is not really following any correlations right now. It's completely doing its own thing. And this can last for a little bit, but it's not going to last forever. Um, so yeah, it's, right now you're basically longing a top, expecting it to go higher, which it certainly can. But usually that's not a great idea. But right now it's kind of different because Bitcoin is in, in turbo bull mode. Uh, McNaz is asking me about AVAX. Yeah, that's that's your answer, McNaz. It's gonna go back up for sure, but it's just a matter of when. Woody says, "Do you have any other Arbitrum projects you were watching that have launched or about to launch? Any opinion on Factor or Trove or Arcadium?" So the only one I've heard of, the only one that I've heard of out of those three you mentioned is Arcadium. And go take a look at it. I know this was trading at $2 yesterday. So everything in Arbitrum is just pumping right now. Arbitrum is where it's at. This is up 38x in... This is up 38x in 19 days. It's hard for me to buy something like that. It is. I mean, same like with ZyberSwap, you know, I got in at the ground basically. So anybody could have also. I made a video of it before it had its fair launch. All right, if you look at Zyber here. You know, it's hard to buy an asset when it's up so high from where it was three weeks ago. All right, it's so super extended right now. But anyways, yeah, the only one I've heard of out of those three that you mentioned, Woody, is Arcadium. And this is basically an online casino. All right, we'll go to their website. It's like GMX where if you hold their token, you basically own a piece of the house here with ALP, All right? The Arcadium LP token is an on-chain pool of USD-backed collateral that acts as counterparty to all players. ALP depositors receive player losses and player back and back player wins. ALP auto compounds forever and pays out 100% real yield, All right? Same thing that GMX does with GLP. And this only uses stablecoin uh, Tether USDT, kind of similar to something like Rollbit RLBT on Solana, that has done very well. The Rollbit coin, but the thing is, Rollbit has a sports book. I'm not sure that Arcadium has a sports book. Either way, people love to gamble, so yeah, I would go with this one, um, but I don't own any of this myself right now. Sniff says, we just got a $5 super chat from Sanretsu saying, keep up the awesome work, sir. Can you check Tonic for me by any chance? Thank you, Sanretsu. Yes, we can certainly look at Tonic. Tectonic. on the Kronos chain. I think you asked me about this a while back because I remember this website. Tonic. Okay, so I've charted this before. It was probably you who asked me about it. 
before I remember looking at this. So I don't remember when the last time we looked at it was. It must have been kind of recent. So first thing to note is the fact that it is still above the green line here. Right, this green line is very important as a support resistance flip level. And we lost it, but as of two days ago or three days ago, we reclaimed it and we also broke a downtrend line, which is very good. And it just flushed out a bunch of people that were long with this little sell off here. Right, another deviation, everybody gets scared, panic sells. Price reclaims the support level, and it usually does continue higher from there. So yeah, Tonic, this is a good looking chart to me. On the weekly time frame too. On the weekly time frame, even clear what I just described right there. Right, you see the obvious support resistance level, this green line got back above it here. So we want to see this week that's going to, the weekly candle will close in like two and a half hours. We want to see it close above the green line, how it is, and you know, even close above this yellow line. And it should then go ahead and continue higher targets. First one over here, 0 0.04432, right? These low previous wicks. Next one right around here. Maybe you want to go around here. 0 0.075. You start working your way back up to the top, 0.116. And then you're basically at the price of where it did launch on, launch at. But yeah, this thing looks bottomed out. Volume, look at the volume here in the weekly time frame coming back in, consolidating, volume also consolidating. The next breakout, you're gonna see big green volume bars and you're gonna see a big green candle. Uh, tonic looks good. Super low market cap, $22.2 .2 million. So we'll see what happens with this one on the Kronos chain. Thank you for that super chat, my friend. Anyway, Sniff says, do you think ETH will drastically drop after we are able to unstake? And if so, to what price? Sniff, I don't think it's going to drastically drop. I don't think that's going to happen. But if it does sell off significantly... Man, what a dip. That CPI dip was something else, huh? Over here, if we drop, I think it stays above 1300, right? Because Ethereum has been much stronger than Bitcoin in the entire bear market. Only went below a thousand back here in like June. That's it. So yeah, I don't see Ethereum dropping, um, dropping more than things like Bitcoin. And the lowest I think it goes, maybe back to thirteen thirty, test the low thirteen hundreds. But yeah, that's kind of the lowest I see it going. But again. The way that things look right now, Ethereum right now, it's holding. We do have to keep an eye on this. Because this isn't the, again, these aren't the best looks when we have all these wicks taking out highs, taking out previous highs, and the candle body closing much, way below the resistance level. And it's just the wick up here. It's not a great look for the bulls. All right, so they need to step in and get some candle closures above all of these wicks in order for us to actually push up higher. 
but you know what it's one of those times right now where the market is not really making a lot of sense it's just pumping 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 in resistance so right now either it goes to 2k or it sells off hard right I wish it was um I wish it wasn't such an ultimatum but it really is right now it's all rationale is really out the window it's turbo bull mode so this thing looks like it wants to pump straight to 2k but if it doesn't if it doesn't I think it's gonna dump hard because it's at such an important key resistance level up here near near seventeen hundred dollars close to eighteen hundred um, but yeah that's ETH Riley Hall saying good evening Connor what's your thoughts on algo algo another one where listen if you're thinking about selling the algo to chase after another thing that's already pumping you are going to be kicking yourself in like a week when it does actually break out what do I mean by that well let's go to the weekly time frame here on algo and if you look at this three strong green weeks from the start of the year right three strong green weeks from then it's been in consolidation for one two three four kind of the fifth week right now of consolidation all underneath look where it's consolidating under a major major support resistance flip level at 27.5 cents 27 and a half cents so my thoughts on algo are don't give up on it if you're thinking about giving up on it you're gonna hate yourself because it's going to pump it can put in 60% in one day I've seen it happen before right this thing is going to teleport don't believe me well look at the chart it, it did 42% from the wick high to low it's 57 percent it puts in 50 percent days when it gets going it will put in another 50 percent day all right so riley algo bullish has not changed zoom out look at the bigger picture look at where we are look at this resistance L look it's going to blow just be patient And I wouldn't overcomplicate it if you wanted to like trade it for a long entry. It's still hanging out here, which is crazy. Really thought this thing would have blew by now and taken off. But Bitcoin needs to also follow through. I shouldn't even say Bitcoin. Like the, the Chinese need to pump it is what needs to happen. China, where you at? Pump algo. Um, but yeah, this thing's going to, it's going to put in a 50% daily candle soon. So don't give up on it yet. Let's look at Vulcan Forge PYR. Another one. This thing is really waiting on the gaming metaverse narrative to really kick into effect. Still in the weekly zone from $5 down to $2.60. Still in the zone, still giving everybody ample time to load bags. And if we look here, it did come I talked about PYR Vulcan Forged in this video. Five play to earn gaming coins. And PYR Vulcan Forged was one of those five. And I gave you two buy levels. First one, 375, as you see, hit that. It really kind of held it. Next one down here, around $3. And the, the plan is still the same with PYR. All right. 
obvious obvious kind of just huge range and I'm expecting it to break out from the range and head back up here and uh, yeah get back up towards these highs so plan has not changed on PYR Vulcan Forged and it has not really pumped yet let's just go over all the whoops let's go over all those coins that I mentioned in that uh, video well look at this one wag me games let's just see So here we're looking at Wagme versus Ethereum. This was back 10 days ago. And I literally said in this video, it just sold off really hard versus Ethereum. It's probably a good time to throw some ETH in. Well, let's fast forward 10 days. What happened? This is Wagme versus Ethereum. Well, this is what happened, right? At the time of the video, it was like right here. It's up like 60% right now versus Ethereum. All right, it took off. All right, that's one. Already started to pump. This thing is still only in a, it's under a $12 million market cap. Still a micro cap and big gaming company here in the US, backed by GameStop, Epic Games. They got Scott Herman Fitness on the team. Uh, I really like Wagme as a gaming coin and still very early. If you look at it versus US dollars too, as you see, it was just in this, this looks like PYR Vulcan Forge, just a massive range. Look what happens when it breaks the range. It happens quickly, but it goes straight up vertical. Right now, it's kind of back to the launch price of Wagme back in June of 2022. This thing is not even a year old yet. <clears throat> but yeah, that's this is up like 60%. Waz hasn't really moved yet. It's trying to. It's trying to really hard still under a 10 million dollar market cap and yeah not much needs to be said here eight million dollar market cap this chart is just chicken scratch a lot of buying and selling happening look at the volume the volume has picked up massively from early january all right so a lot more buying and selling is happening and price isn't really going anywhere so yeah if you want to give up on this one by all means do what you want to do but this is one of those coins that can potentially be massive so you need to forget about it if you bought it and just come back to it in like six to twelve months and check in on it then uh what else did i cover pyr was wag me compete So compete on the daily time frame again. This is another one, not even one year old. It's above previous structure resistance, or right? it's above this previous structure here. So that's that's a very good thing. Uh, this is a really good looking chart. Nothing really needs to be said about it. It's strong, it's bullish, it's above all the key uh, resistance levels. They're acting as support. So, everything looks good here on Compete. And the last one was Katana Inu from that video. And Kata is dumping. So nothing has changed. No fundamentals have changed on this one. I think it's just people basically giving up on it because they all bought it up here and they're waiting for it to pump. And when it doesn't pump, they give up and they chase after something that's up 50% already on the day. So they end up losing out because they don't have the patience to see the investment through. But yeah, Kata near these range lows right now. If it comes down to this level at 0 .0005, uh, that's your buy level closest to current price. 
but there's a lot of other crypto game gains that I like. Uh, Sidus Heroes and the Senate token, very bullish on this one too. Senate starting to travel a little bit. It has hit 12 cents. So this is the governance token of Sidus Heroes. The in-game currency is gonna be the Sidus, Sidus token. This can be compared to something like Smooth Love Potion in Axie Infinity where it's like hyperinflated like the in-game currency that it's rewarded when you play the game the play to earn aspect well a axs is the governance token like senate but you know both will crush if the game it ends up doing well which it does very much have the potential to do so and if you look at sidus trying to eat its way through this kind of major level here at 0 0.00175 and the all-time high of this is all-time high of Sidus is 19 cents so that means if it goes back to the all-time high which is possible um, it would be over a 100x return even from current price so certainly worth looking into I encourage you to do your own research into it Uh, let's see a lot of questions in here CRO asking for AOS I think you asked me about this one last time what is this market cap not shown interesting um, yeah this thing took off took off uh, when, in terms of analysis like what needs to be said here it's in a parabolic uptrend right dips are for buying in a parabolic uptrend if you drop the time frame you'll see this rally based rally structure you can see price reacted well off of it so far coming back down into it so you'd like to see this hold maybe it sweeps, sweeps this wick down here at 9.6 cents that's your next entry Um, but yeah, this thing's looking good, just technical wise. It's a new coin, obviously, just launched in December, and it's going parabolic now. So that looks pretty good. Let's see Scotty Foster says you're the best channel I've found keep the good information rolling in all the way from New Zealand thank you Scotty Foster I appreciate that trucker Steve in the building Sal Villanueva did we look at near protocol we have not looked at near protocol okay near also looks like a lot of the other coins that I've showed so far in the live stream something like Filecoin too um, it actually looks exactly like Filecoin before it broke out and it, it also has the same kind of structure as CRV But yeah, near same exact thing, right? All these charts 
look like they all want to just go straight up vertical. Like look at Filecoin again. Only difference here is, is that, let's turn volume on. Only difference here is that somebody just bought an absolute ton of Filecoin. Right, somebody bought an absolute ton of this stuff to send it so high. If you look at near again, it's literally the same exact picture. It's the same exact picture on the chart. You have the weekly time frame kind of descending wedge, descending triangle, the breakout into the three weeks of consolidation. The only difference between something like near and Filecoin Everything is the same except for this current weekly candle. This is all the exact same. The only thing with Filecoin is somebody just bought a ton of it to send it vertical sky high. They haven't done that with near yet. And they, they probably will eventually. Um, but on the weekly, on the higher time frames, everything looks ultra bullish. Just trying to work its way through this resistance level. So yeah, that's near. I see this in the four hour. Remember, no US trading tomorrow. It's President's Day in the US, so the US stock market's closed. See if we hold this. If we don't. We come down and sweep 230. And I mean, you can only hope you come back to the low twos as another shot. Yeah, all these higher time frames look extremely bullish. All right. EMP, computer, wag me. If you had to choose only one, if you had got time, um, wag me. I like the best out of those, Dre. Trucker Steve says, Trucker here, that goofball you bend was awesome. Don't blame you. Some people are just miserable and try bringing others down. You gave him the business. Yeah, man. People are clowns. People, like you said, are hate will never come from above. I won't hate on another YouTuber making videos. I don't care how bad they are. If I see them put out a video, I like it. I give out likes like, I just give out likes to other people making YouTube content, right? If somebody's hated on you, they are literally just miserable with what's going on in their life and it's simply a reflection of what they think about themselves. So yeah, keep fueling my fire, right? If you're, if you're watching this right now, I got 98 people watching me. If you don't like me, good. Say something in the chat so I can use it to fuel myself. Please do. Because that is fuel for me. I love it. Leon, we're going to look at sushi in one moment. Scotty Foster says, hey, Connor, can you please look at Senate? Will we get a pullback into a buy zone? Listen, with Senate, five cents is ideal because the all-time high is around five dollars. So if we get a nice market-wide flush out and you see Senate anywhere around or below five cents that is your kind of signal to load the bags because the all-time high of senate is like i said it's like five bucks and the beautiful thing is here a lot of people are very lazy a lot of people when they look at Sidus heroes they go to their website they only know that the Sidus token exists. They don't even know that Senate is the governance token and the actual coin that you're going to want to invest into if you're bullish on Sidus heroes. Right? Most people are completely lazy and they don't know that Senate exists. That's a beautiful thing for somebody who's educated. So, yeah, uh, Senate, if you can get it anywhere below $5 or, yeah, $0.05, cents, I mean, you know, that means you, you can potentially 100x if it gets back to the all-time high, which I think is possible. So, yeah, that's the game plan there with Senate. We're going to look at Sushi here and then start to wrap it up because we've been going for quite a while. Now, Sushi, 
is another one where it is like lagging. Let's just kind of get rid of all these lines are useless now. This is a bottom. What more needs to be said here on Sushi? All right, we're just going to look on the weekly time frame here. It's a bottom. All right. If this doesn't look like a bottom to you, you might want to go to the eye doctor and get your eyes checked. This is like a beautiful chart. All time high up here at 23. Big gap to fill up to three bucks. That's a hundred percent return to this level. And then up to 532. A lot of money to be made here in the crypto market, guys. A lot of money to be made. So with sushi, it has not pumped yet, which is great. So this is your first buy level closest to current price. Listen, if the week starts out bullish, which it may, right, and if Bitcoin just pumps straight to 28K, ETH goes right to 2K, Sushi's not going to come back down to 125. But if it does, that's your first entry. That's a great time to get into it. And I mean, listen, you don't even have to touch leverage. Because I just said this thing's going to $3 next. When it breaks out, it will go to $3 within like a week. It's 100%. You double your money. And then anywhere around a dollar two. I like these levels on sushi. Uh, but yeah, this is a bottom to me. And um, I really like the way that this looks. Uni too. Uni is also going to pump hard. Kind of a similar picture, but Uni swaps a little bit stronger than Sushi. I put this on log scale. On log scale, you can see it broke the entire bear market trend line now. And uh, we don't need this. It's just weekly consolidation here. Right? I, I love just zooming things out. I love looking at the higher time frame charts because the picture is just so much clearer. I know that we live in an instant gratification world where people are like junkies ch chasing after the next dopamine hit. But I like to zoom it out and really look at the big picture and see where things are going on a macro time frame. And both Uni and Sushi look really good and zoomed down in the higher time frames. Best place to buy Senate, Uniswap. And yeah, the, the war, or wrapped ETH pair, correct. Andrea saying, how are things? Things are very good. Things are very good. Crypto Cricket from India. We love your content. Thank you. I appreciate that. Karen Dale says, me too. YouTubers put in a ton of work. For real, right? You guys think it's easy to make these videos? It's, I mean, I've been doing it for like two years now, so it's gotten a lot easier. But um, yeah. CRO says, thank you, Connor. Much respect. Been in the game since 2017, and by far your analysis on cryptocurrencies is excellent. Thank you, CRO. I appreciate you saying that. Really appreciate that. Braveheart, what platform are you using there? This is TradingView. Tarbucci says, best YouTube stream I've seen yet. Thank you, Tarbucci. You're a beast. Appreciate that. All right, we're going to look at some ZKs. I see a loop ring request. I see a dent request. Who asked me that? The 
football dream, new sub mate, can you look at Dent? Chinese coins running. Yeah, well, the, the ZKs and the Chinese coins are running indeed. Dent falls into both of those narratives. And as you see here from the Dent chart, let's unlog this. Log scale is annoying. If you look at this, it is starting to run. This is indeed starting to run. All right, look at this long bear market consolidation. Again, everything, eight months long from May, it's when really everything hit hard in the bear market. It just, it's breaking out above the range right now in the weekly time frame. So here's the thing, this is good. Because if you think it's just gonna stop after one little green weekly candle, Clearly, you're probably new to looking and analyzing and trading and investing into the markets, especially the cryptocurrency markets. Because usually when you get a weekly breakout, it starts with one little green one, and then you're going to get an even bigger expansion, right? An example, well, just look at all the other times that it's done that, right? First two weeks green, a little consolidation, bam, straight up. Over here, you know, first two weeks green and then you get expansion in one week you pump like 170 percent here you know over here peak bull market you know you pumped in in three weeks you go 400 percent 500 percent so it's the start right now on dent it is the start maybe you get blessed in this thing like the thing it, it broke out today too so this, this weekly candle will close in two hours and the daily candle will also close in two hours. So probably it's gonna close like here and just go like this. So yeah, I mean, maybe just ape if you wanna get into this one, but it looks really good. It's ready to continue on the higher time frames. And then loop ring, LRC. So loop ring over here in the daily kind of struggling. Um, see this so I showed this in my discord earlier if you look at where this is so the May wick it's already above the May wick right a lot of these coins are you know still trying to get above their May wick loop ring is much stronger all right that May wick was at 32 cents Let me fix this Yeah, the May wick was at 32 cents. It's above that, it retested that on February 10th and it bounced super hard from 32 cents. Now, loop ring is looking a little sketchy to me. I wouldn't advise to short it. But it's at this, you know, weekly resistance level up here, near 50 cents. It already wicked into 49 cents and was a hard rejection candle. You have price action making continuous higher highs and higher lows, but it's getting relatively weaker if you look at the RSI. And this is what I would do. And also you have a rising wedge on the daily time frame. Right, if you just connect the highs like this, you got a rising wedge in daily, weekly resistance with bearish divergence on the daily time frame. It's not a great look. So, what you would want to do basically is you want to see if, first of all, you get the first break in structure. All right, all things right now are pointing bearish, but a lot of things were looking bearish last, last week and Bitcoin pumped to, to 25K and everything just pumped with it. It was just a left curve, long type of play. Now with loop ring, you wanna see if, first of all, you break this first trend line structure. All right, that's your initial sign of weakness. After that, you're gonna come to this trend line. This trend line goes back to January 19th, all right? 
if it comes down and it holds this trend line, that's good. But if it breaks this, then you know it's going to correct further. And it's going to come down back down to possibly 32. All right, possibly around here. Or it may even come a little bit lower to, to like 30 cents. So that's LRC loop ring. Um, very, very, very bullish as a ZK project. It's like the leader of the ZKs behind something like Matic. Um, but when it does eventually break this resistance, your targets are clear. First one you have 64 cents, then you have 88 cents, and then you're at a dollar ten, a dollar twenty up here. And then you're getting pretty close to the highs. And not really, actually. The all-time high of this thing is three dollars and eighty-five cents, you know, up here. So, a ways to go for loopering. The this weekly chart looks a lot stronger than the other weekly charts we've seen. But even in this, you know, this thing has had some solid pullbacks along the way, right? Over here, it had a pullback of eighteen percent. Over here, it had a pullback of 28%. Now over here, it's had a pullback of 13%. You know, so it's had 28% pullbacks on its way up higher here, but this weekly time frame chart is nothing but green for, you know, seven, eight weeks straight. Seven, six weeks straight, it's green. So yeah, at a big level, weekly resistance, weekly supply, wicked into it, a lot of kind of factors pointing towards more consolidation here, which would make sense, but this breakout, when it eventually does break out above this level, it's going to be major. And that is really all you should be concerned about with LRC loop ring. Victor Pena says, really appreciate your channel and Twitter. I saw also ICP took off like you posted a few weeks ago. Do you think IMX and SYS are still bullish? Thank you, Victor. Um, yeah, ICP did take off. I did let everybody know about that one well ahead of time, many weeks ago. Tin Tin, what's up, Tin Tin? Have you looked into DAG? Thoughts, please. They're doing it. Yes, I've known that they're a partner with the United States Air Force. That's been news for the past few years now. Um, yeah, DAG is solid. DAG should pump really hard. Crypto Cricket, tell me TA of Bitcoin. Rewind the stream. I already went over that. What do I think of S Fund and the coins in general? They should crush when the crypto gaming thing comes back. The narrative starts taking into effect again. Am I going live on Tuesday? All things considered, yeah, that's the plan. Crypto Futuro says you made me earn good money with Zyberswap. Nice call, man. Awesome. Awesome. Crypto Futuro. Glad to hear that. Listen, we're at hour 34. Last one. High, high street. Uh, pump today. Also retraced below the daily open right now. should continue higher I know this is a Chinese metaverse coin I also know a lot of people are watching it right now
maybe it comes back down here to like three. Um, but it's putting in a nice reversal candle right now, stopping this selling off. Nice candle. So it's holding this demand zone. No signs of weakness. This looks good to continue higher. Only thing is basically um, getting a good entry. And if we want to keep it simple, you got 325 and 302 and in terms of where it can go, your next level is it's like eight dollars 750 really that's your next target from current price on the higher time frames and you get up to like 11 bucks high looks good and gala extremely bullish this picture this is exactly what a lot of other coins look like before they had their next leg gala looks very good to me i wouldn't give up on this one just yet it's gonna pump again <laughs> only thing of course is just catching a good entry and you know hopefully something i don't know it's about to be a new day we're about to get the weekly candle close weekly candle it's okay it's an inside inside weekly right the body closing within this weekly body the previous week so keep it simple around 4.3 cents is where you would ideally try to enter right towards these lows of the week and anything below that maybe if we get a big flush we come and sweep these lows at like 3.6 and you can get in at the sweep the sweep there that's kind of the best case but yeah gala on the higher time frames it also looks really good despite this kind of this is actually beautiful this is just a shakeout as far as i'm concerned you get a bunch of people a bunch of apes by the top you put in two red weeks in a row. All of their stops, again, all of their stops are below, we're below this kind of structure here. If we look on this three day, you know, we have these, these wicks here. So I can't guarantee it, but I can say with a lot of certainty, you know, everybody had their stops below this. What happens? It goes and sweeps that here, right? It sweeps it. Takes out all the stops and then it wants to go higher. So a gala looks super good to me. Enough said. Continue higher. But everything depends on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin right now. Trying to eat the dip. Again, no US market open tomorrow or tonight. So if we pump, you can thank China for that because they're the ones pumping the bags. Uh, FEVR, no, I'm not gonna check FEVR. That was the last one for the day. So the stream is now concluding. We'll see if Bitcoin pumps out of this. Hopefully it does. And then blur, I'm also long blur. I got in blur last night at 118. And if you look at it now, it's at 127. All right, it went as high as 139. So nice little trade here. Came and retested the open. Still up 
regardless, hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you did, smash up the like button. If you want to join the Discord, go to my website, CryptoEmpireCo.io and join before the prices go up. And uh, yeah, check out my review section. If you want to see what members have to say about this, well, it's all here. Real reviews, real people, real results. It's where we dominate the market, people. Anyways, we got a lot to look forward to this week. I look forward to crushing this and making some more money from crypto because it's a very lucrative time to be here. You're in the right place at the right time. Don't sell something because it hasn't pumped yet and chase after something that's already pumped. Let your investments and your trades play out because they probably will play out. There's a reason why you bought something in the first place. So just see it all the way through. I hope that you guys enjoyed this live stream. We charted for an hour and a half. We went over a ton of altcoins, trade ideas, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. Some low caps. A lot was discussed today. So thank you for all of your support and sticking with me until the end. I really appreciate everybody out there who does support me on my channel, watches all of my content. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't continue to do this. You know, we're approaching two years if it wasn't for all of the support that I get on a routine basis. So really, thank you so much. Everybody out there, this is a global kind of channel here, a global community, a global audience. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for spending your Sunday here at Crypto Empire where we dominate the market. It's time for me to go. Have an amazing rest of your night. I'll see you all very soon. We got some regular videos scheduled for you all. And then, of course, we'll be back with our morning domination streams and the likes. So a lot to look forward to. Hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. And I will see you.